success is subjective. The perception of about success is different from people to people. Uh, what sir, according to you, is the meaning of success? So success means uh, different things to different people. Uh, for me, it's about uh, setting a goal, uh, working hard towards it, and ensuring that uh, there are enough metrics to be able to measure what success is, and uh, really on achieving it uh, with the satisfaction that you've given your best. I think to me that's what success really means. So many successful men says they had a they had a guide or a kind of a mentor in their during their lifetime. So do you ever did you ever had such a person as a mentor or a guide? No, I've been uh, very fortunate uh, to have started my career under the shadows of my father who's really been a role model or a mentor to me. Uh, he's been a pioneer in this industry, uh, been in the field for over 45-50 years now. Uh, so I've learned a lot from him. Uh, besides my uncle uh, who works with him, I mean uh, again, uh, he's somebody that I really look up to. Uh, on the business side, uh, I'm a fairly avid reader, you know, so I read a lot of uh, biographies, autobiographies. Uh, so several mentors, um, not really mentors, I would say, but role models in that sense, you know, uh, uh, people who I look up to and uh, things that I've learned from them. Sir, what is your observation about uh, demonetization? Uh, so real estate has been one of the sectors that has been most affected by demonetization. Uh, I would say that uh, in the short run, it has been not necessarily that good. Uh, sentiments have been a little suppressed. People have been rethinking their decision to buy. Uh, but I feel that in the long run, this is something that will really add to the transparency of the sector. Uh, it will help the sector to really sort of drive up volumes. And uh, from a customer perspective, I think it will add a lot more faith in the builders. You know, So I think in the long run, it's a very, very good uh, incidence to my mind. Do you think uh, it have uh a negative impact on the real estate sector? In the short run, definitely, I think demonetization has had a big effect, not just on our sector, but in, uh, for the economy in general. Uh, this is also reflected by way of lower GDP numbers in the quarters soon after the demonetization happened. Uh, so there's no doubting that, you know, but I think on the positive side, what it has really done is that it's created a sense of compliance in people, uh, more transparency, uh, you know, and uh, these are things I think which will really uh, stand in good uh, stead for the economy in the long run. We of course need to be very, very careful about selecting a location for our real estate projects. We need to be very careful about the selection of the location and the selection of material and so on. A lot of, lot of things have to be taken care of while choosing a location for a project. What? are the main criteria you follow while selecting a location for a particular project? You're absolutely right. I mean, uh, as people say, for real estate, it really is location, location, location. Uh, we as an organization have been very, very sort of uh, uh, depending on this or cognizant of this fact. Uh, right from the time my father started, I mean, location more than price has been the key reason for us to choose a site. Things that we really look for is one, the approach road, uh, distance from the city, the development around the uh, site in terms of, uh, you know, I mean, uh, one in terms of is there good social infrastructure, be it schools, hospitals, department stores, uh, as also in terms of general residential uh, developments, are there other developments, houses that have come up uh, in that vicinity. Uh, you know, so these are things that we really look for while selecting a site. Do you see any drastic transformation in the real estate sector after the introduction of RERA? No, RERA has been uh, fairly... Uh, uh, monumental sort of a regulation for our sector. Uh, I think it's brought in a lot of transparency, uh, you know, and uh, we're already seeing I mean, the effects of RERA in that sense. I mean, a lot of consolidation that is happening. Uh, many, many smaller builders or one-time developers are no longer uh, finding it uh, suitable uh, to be in the business, you know, just in terms of compliances and things like that. Uh, you know, so consolidation is one thing that we're definitely seeing. Um, even in the newer projects that we are launching post RERA, we are seeing that the volumes are far higher, you know, I mean, because there's, I think, an inherent trust uh, that the customers uh, uh, feel, you know, when that the project is RERA certified. Uh, and hence, we're seeing that there's a larger number, amount of sort of uh, the sales volume is faster. And in, in fact, even the realization, price realizations have been much better uh, since RERA, you know, so these have been my experiences. There are many rules, negatives and positive rules that plays a major role uh, in the success of a project actually right from the beginning right from the 
planning phase to the implementation to the beginning of the implementation phase and till the success of a project there are many kind of rules in india that plays a bigger role and many of the projects get stuck many of the projects are abandoned even before the completion due to many rules that are forcefully implemented in india so what according to you are the rules to be modified or re-implemented in our com in our country to protect the interest of the investors and to improve employment so answering your uh, last question first uh, employment to generate employment i think uh, real estate is one of the sectors that is you know key to employment in the country uh, as we all know it's just, you know it's the second biggest contributor to the gdp after agriculture uh, I think really in terms of you know I mean the issues that we face as a developer is in terms of the timeline for approval. You are right. I mean you mentioned that there are a lot of approvals, rules to be followed, and which we are fine with. It's just that sometimes these processes just take a very long time. Uh, you know, from anywhere between six months to one year, or sometimes even going up to two years. Uh, there are multiple sort of NOCs that we need to obtain, be it from the airport, fire, pollution board. Uh, so, uh, you know, sometimes uh, two levels of uh, building plan approvals: one at the development authority, then one at the municipal corporation. Uh, you know, and uh, sometimes uh, you know there are also acts that are retrospectively sort of implemented. You know, so these are things that uh, create certain amount of uncertainty. You know, uh, so really, if these things are sort of eased out, ironed out made easier for projects to be launched i think that itself will add a lot of uh, you know opportunities for employment and at the same time i think uh, you know uh, even for investors to sort of really get the confidence to be able to invest uh, you, uh, you know if uh, the, i think if if really these these sort of rules are ironed out i think it will really help the sector what are the other potential markets you would like to look into as a sector you know i think the cities that are doing well for real estate are primarily uh, i think bangalore definitely is a very very stable market besides there is uh, hyderabad which is uh, doing really well on the commercial side pune to a certain extent uh, uh, mumbai area and ncr area you know is a bit of bit of saturation but it's a very very well established sort of uh, uh, locations uh, as an organization but we believe that you know real estate is a very local or a regional business uh, you know it's very important to understand the local laws the local environment approvals uh, and things like that because uh, all this is you know i mean the sector is very very dependent on these aspects uh, which is why we have no real plans of venturing outside the state of karnataka i mean uh, we are a largely bangalore focused company we intend to be so uh, we de you know we are ex we, we have certain amount of land holdings in mysore and mangalore uh, where we may see uh, you know ourselves entering to do a couple of projects in the coming years can you give us a brief of the csr activities that you are involved in uh, so as an organization we do uh, multiple things you know one is that we tend to adopt villages that are around the uh, vicinity of our projects maybe many of them are uh, owners of land who have sold the land to us uh, here we do various activities like you know maybe skill development be it uh, you know teaching driving sewing uh, you know we do even in terms of uh, uh, waste management in terms of uh, backyard garden maintenance uh, adoption of schools you know where we provide uh, english as well as computer skills uh, to the students um, you know maybe even um, um, additional sort of resources to the schools in addition to what the government sort of provides uh, these are one 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 aspect of things that we do uh, on the sustainability and nature front is something else we do you know we encourage uh, we have events where we invite our customers to come to our sites plant a tree uh, you know adoption of lakes around our projects so these are multiple things that we uh, tend to do on the education side uh, we also have adopted 21 government schools in uh, in and around the vicinity where we providing a lot of academic sort of uh, assistance to these schools so how do you view the policy environment in the country both for the economy in general and the real estate sector i would uh, think that over the last 4 to 5 years or uh, you know from the first term of the nda government policies have been fairly stable uh, you know a lot of rules have been streamlined uh, you know but having said that i think uh, there is certain amount of encouragement or stimulus or ease of doing business that we would still expect you know to in, in order for investments to be uh, you know sort of increased uh, animal spirits to come back into the uh, economy uh, you know as we see many many of many of the sectors are depressed uh, as it stands today you know so really our hope is that uh, somewhere you know some amount of stimulus that sort of kick starts the economy and after that i'm sure that i mean there are good amount of entrepreneurs good companies uh, in the country and uh, you know these will really take the economy forward how much do you think can the real estate sector add to the country's gdp with a favorable policy environment 
No, as I mentioned to you, you know, I mean, real estate as it is is the second biggest contributor to the economy. Uh, you know, and if you add the allied industries, be it steel, cement, you know, just labor, uh, you know, multiple other, uh, you know, maybe even construction equipments and things like that, it's a huge driver for the economy. Uh, the shortage for homes is well, very well documented. I think they're close to about 2.2 million square, uh, 2.2 million homes that are, uh, you know, I mean, the uh, um, requirement uh, in the country. So if if really I think the approval process is eased out, uh, you know, some some reforms in the land, uh, if you know, if the if it's brought in, in addition to what uh, I mean, the steps that have already been taken, be it RERA or GST, um, one of the demands that we as a sector also have is that you know to bring in the stamp duty as well as the registration fee under the gambit of GST. Uh, you know, some of these things are implemented. We really expect that real estate can be a big contributor to the economy. Do you think the current policy changes would add to it? Uh, like I mentioned, I mean, not necessarily policy changes, some amount, of, some amount of stimulus as well as at the same time, you know, I mean, some ease, uh, easing out of some of the policies or streamlining some of the policies. These would definitely be helpful. Infrastructure is the key to growth. What kind of partnership is possible between the government and the private sector in building the future infrastructure? You know, the private sector has a huge role to play in terms of infrastructure. Of course, it's when you say infrastructure is very different from real estate. And I mean, we as a real estate developer are more uh, uh, constrained, uh, you know, f to providing infrastructure within our projects or within the campuses. But outside that is really, you know, I mean, very little that we can do. I mean, maybe from a CSR perspective and things like that, like I mentioned, there are certain adoption of lakes, maybe some uh, uh, some uplifting of roads, very minor things that we can really contribute, you know. But I think the larger role uh, is of the government to make sure that the infrastructure to our projects or to, uh, you know, to the various lands in the vicinity of the city uh, or, uh, you know, in terms of connectivity, uh, be it roads, be it metro, you know, providing this is really outside the gambit of uh, what we do and, you know, it's really the government's role. I mean, there are private players who will play a part in executing or implementing these things and, uh, I mean, as long as, I mean, the government is fairly transparent in terms of uh, how it sort of awards these contracts, I'm sure the private people will play a good role. So what, according to you, defines the quality of what you want to do? So quality is a very subjective matter, you know, I mean, it's very difficult to really say, uh, you know, I mean, uh, while when you, while you can possibly see and notice quality, I think a large part of quality is felt, uh, you know, many a times, you know, even a layman can, when you, en you know, enters a project and tell whether the quality is good or bad, you need not be an engineer to uh, actually decipher whether the quality is good or bad. As a company, I mean, we are very conscious in terms of ensuring that the material that we use, you know, or the item that goes into the construction are all high quality. I mean, be it, uh, you know, I mean, there are various tests that are uh, sort of applicable, uh, which we conduct. And at the same time, we don't compromise in terms of the sort of quality, uh, I mean, the quality of the uh, items that go into our construction projects. So what, according to you, a young engineer should have? Uh, a, a young engineer uh, starting to make out a career, I think, uh, Two, three things are very, very important. One is an eagerness to learn, uh, you know, I mean, uh, really noticing what's happening on site, uh, questioning as to why something is done the particular way, not just accepting that that is the way it is done and uh, really trying to see if there are innovative or better ways to do the same thing. Uh, the second real uh, quality that would, uh, you know, I mean, I would be uh, 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 looking into an engineer is, you know, whether he has an eye for detail, uh, you know, it's not about just getting something done, but doing it right, uh, you know, so these are some of the things that you know I would uh, I mean other than of course I would say integrity hard work I mean these things are given but really these two aspects are very very key uh, for a new engineer to make a mark in the industry many completed projects and many down the line what is the philosophy that drives you so for us, I mean, we've been a really a customer centric sort of a company, you know, I mean, the philosophy, I mean, that drives us most is that we need to really provide value to our customers. When I say value, it need not necessarily be in cheap, uh, you know, and, uh, it, it, it would really mean that providing the best quality at a most reasonable rate. And we given that, you know, I mean, we have a large land bank, what are historical costs, we are in a position to really transfer some of the benefits uh, to the customers in terms of providing a very competitive product. What I mean is that we could provide an apartment, let's say, uh, at a lower cost, you know, for the same quality or even if maybe even a better quality from what our competitors are providing, but at a lower or same cost, like I mentioned. So it's really value is something that really drives all of us. Can you give us a brief about your future plans? So as a company, we are involved in basically 
two verticals as we st- uh, as we speak one is the f- um, you know mid income housing and the other is a plotted development uh, these both of this roughly constitute 50% of our portfolio today uh, what we are looking to get into is into the commercial sector where we are trying to build an annuity stream for the company you know i mean uh, not something that we're looking to sell but to lease uh, to a grade clients uh, this is something uh, i mean this vertical currently we have about 2 million square feet under development we're looking uh, to scale this up to about 7 million square feet in the next maybe 3 to 4 years so i mean as a group of course i mean as uh, i mean primarily being a real estate group we have these three verticals the other large footprint that we have is in the education where we run a very very successful school uh, you know we're looking to set up uh, two new campuses this coming year we have roughly about 3500 students which we are looking to take it up to about 10000 students so that's the broad plan for the group so can you give us a brief about your quality policy and your implementation plan no we have a very well documented uh, sort of a quality manual uh, there's a very sort of a strict induction process for all the new engineers there's a training period of about a month for every anybody all engineers who join our company to understand what is the century way of constructing like i mentioned i mean it's not just about getting things done but doing it right uh, which are all well documented in the quality manual and we are uh, you know I mean, we have uh, systems and processes whereby or checks and balances to ensure that uh, these things are getting implemented at our site so this is how we ensure that you know a certain level of quality is achieved in all our projects so what according to you is the main attraction of working with century group i mean i would like to believe that as a company we provide great opportunities for somebody who wants to work here you know i mean when i say opportunities it's not really defined by somebody's job description or job role uh, we encourage people to be pretty much have an entrepreneurial spirit uh, you know uh, we al- uh, we encar- allow people to take big decisions we allow them to make mistakes learn from those mistakes as long as of course these are all taken in the right uh, you know with the right sort of uh, thought process uh, you know and the canvas is very very large as a company you know so i mean uh, uh, somebody who is really eager to build a career you know you can 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 come get an opportunity to really face large challenges at, at the same time enriching themselves at their career um, i mean of course we also you know we are we are a company that reward our employees extremely well you know i mean uh, be it in terms of real estate assets be it in terms of uh, you know even monetary com- uh, you know compensation as well as you know sort of various other things that we sort of uh, provide for uh, the employees and their family uh, so i would think these are possibly the attractions why somebody would like to work here so what is the biggest challenge that you have experienced in your business life and how did you overcome the hurdle the biggest challenge that uh, i have encountered is really in scaling up you know i mean and of course at each stage of your career new challenges present itself you know i mean so it's very difficult to say that this is any particular incidence is the biggest challenge i mean you're faced with challenges all the time and it is about how we sort of uh, overcome these challenges uh, for us it's really been about building a construction team from scratch in the last 10 years we've set up systems and processes built a uh, you know sort of a very sort of a competent team uh, creating a brand i mean i would say all these are challenges in its own way uh and which i believe that we have successfully sort of overcome to come to a stage where we are today and i mean the challenges that face us are i mean now we are entering into the commercial sector so that's a new uh, vertical for us uh we're looking to scale to other cities in terms of uh, you know our uh, setting up our sales footprint so this is another challenge that uh, you know is uh, uh something of immediate uh, requires immediate attention from us you know so at every stage as i mentioned i mean the various uh, challenges sort of uh, uh you know we are presented with and finally uh what is your advice to the upcoming aspiring engineers and the young entrepreneurs so my advice would be to really embrace uh, you know challenges and failures it's uh, you know for any entrepreneur there are like i was just talking about you know multiple challenges that are uh, you know you, you sort of face uh, very often you feel very lonely because you know you don't know whom to share some of these uh, issues uh, with you know so i think resilience is very very important hard work of course you know i mean uh, uh, and a particular passion or drive i think it's very important that you enjoy what you're doing because that's when some of the other things is possible you know i mean you're able to work hard uh, you know you feel like you know when you want to wake up every morning uh, you know you know wanting to go to office if there is passion in what you do so these are things really that you know i would uh, urge every entrepreneur to keep in mind before really taking the plunge right sir thank you so much for the valuable time you have spent with us uh, on behalf of construction philosophy and our team i'd like to thank you so much and uh, we are looking forward to your continued support for our ventures as well thank you and, uh, thank you so much it's been a pleasure you, interacting with you yeah we wish you a very very good success for your upcoming uh, projects as well thank you thank you so much wish you also all the best thank you sir thank, thank you. you so much